Welcome to today's presentation on Parker Hannapin's frameless motors. Today we will go over some best practices when integrating a frameless motor into your equipment. Parker's 78,000 square foot motor and gearhead facility is located in New Ulm, Minnesota. Parker's frameless motor consists of a separate winding and rotor that is provided for direct integration into a customer's machine design. Some of its features and benefits shown here are the option for a pre-installed commutation board with Hall effects. Motor and feedback are provided as an integrated unit. Rare earth neodymium magnets along with a high density copper winding provide a high magnetic flux leading to high torque in a small frame size. And finally skewed laminations with an odd slot count to reduce torque ripple at low speeds. Parker frameless motors offer greater design flexibility. The motor is designed directly into the equipment, reducing its overall size. Improved dynamic response and settling is accomplished because the frameless motor is directly driving the load. A traditional house motor requires a mechanical device, such as a coupling attached to its shaft, to engage in assembly. The compliance found with this type of connection makes inertia matching critical for proper servo tuning. Many times additional components, such as a gearhead, might be required to assist. With the direct drive approach of a frameless motor, inertia matching is not nearly as critical. Mismatches can be 50 to 100 times greater than that of the housed motor. And now we will show some best practices in the integration of a Parker frameless motor. In this example, a KO64 motor is being integrated into a housing that will drive a pulley. Per the customer's request, a custom housing was designed for the motor. Tapped holes were incorporated for them to mount their encoder. Holes were also designed in to accommodate the motor shaft and to allow for proper cable exit. The front of the housing was designed with tapped holes and a pilot for the customer to mount that flange to. A step has been designed into the housing for proper stator location relative to the ends of the housing and for proper position of the rotor relative to the shaft length of the assembly. The diametral clearance between the motor's end turn outer diameter and housing step inner diameter is critical. Parker recommends a slip fit between the stator and housing. In our example, Loctite was used to secure the two components together. Recommendations for various motor diameters will be provided later in the presentation. Here you can see a cross section of the stator within the housing. A distance of 11 millimeter was maintained between the end of the stator assembly and the inner wall of the housing. This provided sufficient space for all cable routing. At the output, we maintained a 1.4 millimeter gap between the end turn outer diameter and the inner diameter of the housing. The pilot depth at the front of the housing should maintain a minimum gap of no less than 1.4 millimeter between the end turn and the assembly it is being mounted to. In our example, we maintained a 3 millimeter gap. For this assembly, we will be loctiting the rotor to the shaft. The shaft outer diameter is 14 millimeter with a G6 tolerance. Our KO64 rotor has an inner diameter of 14 millimeter. It will be slip fitted onto the shaft. Tolerance to support this is an H7. We'll see that the shaft has a step on it. Similar to the step that we put into the housing, it will ensure that the rotor is centered under the stator lamination. The recommended Loctite is number 609 or equivalent. You can now see how the entire assembly goes together. The shaft of the motor extends beyond the rear housing for a clamp-on encoder. At the output, the shaft extends past the flange to engage the pulley. And now we will summarize the key items discussed in this presentation. As mentioned, winding end turn clearance is critical. Your requirements will be dictated largely by whatever your need is for UL certification. Parker recommends a sliding fit between mating parts. ANSI standards should be applied. Parker recommends the adhesives shown here or their equivalents. Insulation reference can be found in UL Standard 1004. Thanks for joining us today. Make sure to visit us at parkamotion.com for more information on our frameless motor 
as well as other motion control products offered by Parker Hannifin.